mother dies with her baby inside, but her husband does something amazing. The just-born baby named Gabriella was sort of accidental. Her mother Melanie suffered a heart attack during labor and was pronounced clinically dead. There was little hope for her and the baby in her belly, but her husband did something surprising. Let's see what happened and how this story ends. Melanie was pregnant with her second daughter and couldn't wait any longer to see her. She and her husband were delighted to have a new family member and a baby sister for their son Brady. The pregnancy was going well and it was not until week 39 that the signs of labor began to appear. When they scanned me and I was pregnant with Brady, she did her best to find a gynecologist and a hospital that had the same pro-life point of view as her. Sometimes, decisions in a medical situation must be made in a split second and Melanie wanted to make sure that her son's life weighed the same or even more than her own life. She was so convinced about it that she took 25 minutes out of the way to see a trusted gynecologist. Surprisingly, she had found one and felt she would be in good hands with her second pregnancy. All signs pointed to an uneventful delivery and nothing seemed out of the ordinary, but then disaster struck. When Melanie was in the hospital bed about to give birth and right after the water broke, she started to feel sick. She told her nurse that she felt dizzy and nauseous, as if she were about to pass out, but nothing indicated anything serious. But suddenly, Melanie closed her eyes and collapsed right in front of her doctors and her husband. She appeared to be having seizures and her vital signs were showing something was very wrong with her heart rate as her blood pressure was dropping to practically zero. But little by little, she began to turn blue and stop breathing. With her daughter still in the belly, the girl's vital signs also began to decline at an alarming rate. What was happening to Melanie and what was the best way to treat the mother and her baby? Code Blue was declared and a full medical team rushed into the room. They unplugged the bed that Melanie was in and took her to the operations room. The diagnosis showed that Melanie was suffering from an embolism of the amniotic fluid. It is a rare but serious disease that occurs when the amniotic fluid enters the mother's bloodstream. This can have instant and devastating effects. Because at that time Melanie was declared as clinically dead, the medical team focused on the baby as they performed an emergency cesarean. Melanie's husband Doe was very concerned as he had seen his wife taken away and was told that it might be the last time he would see her alive. Her condition was serious and it was likely that she would not survive and if she did, she would never be the same again. It was heartbreaking news for Doe who loved his wife fiercely and hadn't seen such a thing coming. He felt totally powerless and scared and didn't know how to deal with it so he said goodbye to her and started praying. In his head he repeated the words, God, I know this is more than I can handle, which means you have a plan and a purpose in this and I trust you, but please, if it is your will, allow me to hug my wife again. As the terrible news about Melanie's condition spread among family and friends, they began to pray while sitting in the waiting room. They all clasped hands and pleaded to God to please bring her back. They also took their prayers to social media and the message went viral. In just a few hours, Melanie had become one of the 100 most searched people on Twitter and Phoenix's number one person on Google. As a result, thousands of messages began to arrive from people around the world who also prayed for Melanie. Meanwhile, Doe was able to visit her. Melanie was left in the operating room where the doctors fought for her life, but they also had little hope for her. And Doe still didn't know if his wife was going to live or die before seeing her daughter. A nurse asked him what they were going to call her and he told her Gabriella. It was an immensely bittersweet moment for him. He was glad that his daughter was alive, but he feared for his beloved wife. He feared he would have to raise his little princess daughter by himself and felt very sad that he couldn't share that moment with his wife. Doctors had already been able to revive Melanie and get her to have a weak pulse, but she was still in critical condition. After 48 long and terrifying hours, they were able to transfer her to the ICU where they tried to keep her alive. Melanie's brother, who is a cardiothoracic surgeon, had just arrived at the hospital and asked to see her files. He saw that things were not looking good for his sister who was in a state of cardiovascular collapse and that she kept getting worse. The whole family had to say goodbye because no one believed she would survive. Doe's heart was broken, but he turned to Melanie to say his last words. He said, I love you. I will always love you. Brady, Gabriella are beautiful and they love you. If you have some fighting left, fight. Other members of the family also expressed their love and meanwhile everyone kept praying. They prayed that Melanie would come back from the abyss and that Gabriella and Brady would not have to grow up without a mother. 
With almost all hope lost, prayers were the only thing left for them, but Melanie didn't improve. Her condition only seemed to get worse. She had already received two blood transfusions, but her blood was still dangerously clotting and to make matters worse, the doctors realized that they had accidentally cut out one of her arteries during the cesarean section. She had internal bleeding and another operation was needed to stop it. All the blood had gone to her belly and they had to plug her stomach to absorb it. It seemed that her whole body was giving up, her heart was barely pumping and her lungs had failed so she depended on a respirator. The medical staff waited for the moment when her body would give up as they saw that there was nothing they could do for her but deep inside, Melanie was not willing to give up. She really wanted to see her family again and had great faith that what was happening to her should happen. It was decided to transfer Melanie to another hospital where they had better technology to treat her. There, they connected her to a machine called ECMO to help her heart and lungs recover. To check her neurological functions, they lowered the level of sedation to the point where she woke up for a few moments. Just when she regained consciousness, Doe walked into the room and looked at her and simply said, Hello, dear. Tears welled up in Melanie's eyes and this was a clear sign to Doe that she was not brain dead. Hope suddenly dawned on the horizon again, but one more surgery was needed to remove the plugging in her stomach. Once again, everything was at stake, but before Melanie underwent anesthesia, Doe showed her a photo of Gabriella. In her own words, this must have awakened a kind of mother bear instinct in her and she almost tried to get out of bed to go see her little girl, but before that she was anesthetized and right there it started a few scary hours to see if Melanie would make it through the operation. And she did. It was almost a miracle, something none of her doctors had expected, but Melanie had been strong enough and perhaps stubborn enough to come out ahead. Within 24 hours, they were able to remove her respirator and all medication except pain relievers and it was clear that she could live. Melanie and her husband could not be more happy or grateful and their reunion was simply incredible. Melanie does not remember most of this story since she was unconscious most of the time, but when she heard everything that had happened later, she was amazed. Basically, she had died and came back to hug her family again, and she felt enormous relief and humility as she heard all the prayers on her behalf and all the support from many people that she had received. She felt her soul glowing and still today she thanks God for allowing her to survive this and allowing her daughter to survive this too, to come out of it all with intact health. What a story, right? I'm so happy that Melanie and little Gabriella were unharmed. Hit the like button if you're happy too. The more support we get, the more beautiful stories we can tell.